Hello everyone, today we will discuss data types in Architect ALP. It's no secret that no project is complete without intermediate variables and constants. One of their main attributes is the data type. Currently we use three types of variables. In the future we plan to add a few more. The boolean type or logical is the value true and false or logical 1 and logical 0 respectively. Discrete inputs and outputs of mini PLCs are just boolean. The integer type or integer, these are whole positive numbers ranging from 0 to over 4 billion. The real data type float, these are numbers that have a fractional part which can be negative and their range of values is so large that I don't even know such numbers. So I will display it on the screen. Boolean type is usually used to work with PR inputs and outputs to create logical expressions or to turn something on or off. The integer type is most often used for counting something, for example, people in the room, boxes on a conveyor and so on. Real data is needed to work with analog inputs and outputs of PLCs or for example, for mathematical calculations while working. When working in ALP, you can create constants, local variables and network variables. We will talk about network variables later. But let's take a closer look at the first two. They are added to the workspace using the corresponding icons on the toolbar. For a constant, you can set the data type and values. It's better to do it in this order. ALP may give an error if you try to make a boolean constant with a value of 36 and a half. Constants do not change during the operation of the device and retain their values. Unlike constants, local variables can be written and read, that is, used as input data or as a calculation result. Therefore, there are two blocks for working with them, a read block and a write block. After adding such a block to the canvas, you need to assign a variable to it. This is done using the button with three dots in the properties panel. Clicking on it, you get to the variable table, which can be opened through the device tab. At the top, there are buttons that allow you to create a variable, duplicate it or delete it. You can also create a variable by simply writing a new name in the last line of the variable name graph, where it now says none, and you can delete it by pressing delete. Variables must have a name and data type. Variables can also be made non-volatile. Then they will be saved in the memory of the PR even if the power of the device is turned off. Without this checkmark, the variable will be rest. This is important for various settings which are set by the user from the screen and for counters. Imagine you are counting parts on a conveyor. 1, 2, 3, 10 and so on. Suddenly the light went out. Turned on, there are no details and the counter is zero. Where are all the details, right? To prevent this from happening, the details must be made non-volatile. Non-volatile variables can also be given a default value. This is especially useful for creating settings with the default values. In the variable table, you can also see whether you see this variable somewhere in the project or not. And now, attention, on the left we have a separate quick access panel to already created variables. You can quickly add them to the right place in the project by simply dragging and dropping. By default, a read block with a variable is created. And if you drag it to the output of some block, then you get a write block. And at the bottom left, you can see a list of links to the selected variable. And by clicking on them with the mouse, go to the right place on the diagram. Convenient, I think. No need to pull the block out of the toolbar every time. But this is only work with already created variables. By the way, if local variables are used only on the canvas and simply serve to transfer data from one part of the program to another, then when loading projects into the device, it will be considered a regular communication line and no memory will be spent on it. Well, now we know how to create local variables and constants. Perhaps it's time to move on on the component library, but about that next time. Thank you for your attention, all the best.